player, how different was it for you being in Bad Company than when you were in Mott? What were the, the major differences for you as a player? Um, I'd say... Because I, I grew up before Mott, you know, in the early days of Mott, I was a big uh, soul and R&B and blues fan. And then Mott evolved into what it became, you know, a glam rock pop band, if you will. Mm -hmm. Thanks to people like Bowie, who helped enormously. But it just changed the, the, um, the dynamic of the band a bit. It had got away from its early raw roots, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think I said to you earlier that the album that personified Mott to me was Brain Capers. It was really rough and raw. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a punk album. It was very direct. Were you I, not happy then with that sort of glitter glam direction? Not really. No, I, um, by the time we'd got success, I'd, I'd lost, I suppose I'd lost interest in... Um, I'm glad it was successful for the lads involved, but my heart was elsewhere. I wanted to get back to more simplistic, bluesy rock music, you know, the stuff that I really was able to do with Paul, which uh, Mott wasn't that kind of a band anymore. It, 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 was, it got quite complex, quite complicated, mm -hmm. but successful and uh, mm -hmm. good. But I wanted to get to, back to something more simple, more roots, and that's why I, t I started talking to Paul and we ended up doing what we did. But um, it gave me a lot more freedom in as much that there, it was just bass, drums and guitar. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I could stretch out, but it, it, there would be no other, like in Mott, there was keyboards and Ian's guitar. Mm -hmm. It was just quite exposed, so I had to really sort of, you know, get stuck in, if you will, to hold up my end of the of the music, and it helped me enormously as a player and gave me a lot of confidence to just... Um, so you could stretch? Yeah, I could stretch and get back to my blues roots within the context of Bad right. Company, which to me had no limits, whereas Mott did have limits at, at the end there for me. Let's talk a little bit about this supergroup status thing, because I, th I think it's worth remembering that Bad Company went out on the road and did a British tour yeah. before the first album came out. Yeah. I mean, which is an amazing, astonishing way round. Yeah. I mean, but this is once again the sort of genius, I suppose, of, uh, of Peter Grant. Yes. Um, and I, I wonder if you can just sort of tell us a little bit uh, about what it was like for you being in the centre of that kind of super group um, hurricane mm. that surrounded you. Because I remember you coming in when I was at Capitol, yeah. uh, and you know it was the height of the supergroup thing. The, the album hadn't really come out yet. We were playing a white label of it, and you know there, it was it was crazy. It was like it was it it was a crazy time. Because we came into you about eleven o'clock at night, if I remember. I, I, yes, I think you left about three o'clock in the morning. Probably. <laughs> no, it was uh, yeah, it was all a bit of a whirlwind. The yeah. the initial. Uh, not so much hype, but the association with Zeppelin and Atlantic and, you know, the, the groups we'd come from before. There was a lot of press, which was obviously good. Peter Grant managed to get the press working on our side. Um, so from, you know, struggling for years with Mott and Paul struggling for years with Free, suddenly there was this great opportunity for us to propel ourselves, and we certainly did, because... He, Peter Grant just kicked the doors open. He said, look, you know... Literally. Uh, yeah, I'll open the doors, but you've got to go up there and play. He said, I can't play. He said, but I can put you on the stage. And he uh, he did that. He got us... Um, well, did the British tour, then we went to, straight to America and did our first stadium tour, opening up for Edgar Winter. Mm. We never played in stadiums, ever, any of us. I mean, I think Free might have done a couple with Blind Faith, but as a touring band, we, and it was great. You know, suddenly we were doing all these big stadiums all over America, and at the end of that tour, we went back and headlined. I mean, that's quite quick. I remember, I mean, the first time that I saw you as Bad Company live uh, was at Charlton Football Ground. Yeah. Um, where The Who, it was The Who headlining. The Who, yeah. And um, I was, you know, fortunate enough to, uh, to compare that. And I just remember the kind of the atmosphere on that day. Do you remember the atmosphere on that day? It was, it was a lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement in the air because I think, um, you know, the, the uh, connection, well, obviously, you know, Peter knew The Who and the faces and all that. We didn't really know them, but they... 
they could, they had that interest in like what's Peter Grant got now, you know, another Zeppelin or something. So there was a lot of anticipation for us and excitement from our point of view as to how it was going to go. So it was, it was, it was great. It was a great time. Yeah.